For centuries, humans have sought ways to trim this planet of untamed clay. Their efforts, though valiant, have been futile. Until now. Hey everybody, it's Anne, traveling the universe to help those in need wherever they may be. In this video, I'd like to help those of you who might be having trouble trimming your pots. I'll show you what tools are best to use and provide tips on how to get that professional finish to your work. Keep an eye out for alien life on this planet. They're friendly, but a little weird at times. Let's get started. The number one thing to remember is that what you throw will determine how you trim and what trim tools that you will use. Here, I'll show you what I mean. I threw this bowl a day ago and left it out to dry. It's now leather hard. As you can see, the bowl still has a very thick bottom and no foot ring, so I'm going to show you my technique of trimming a foot ring into it. Let's take care of the inside of the bowl first, because once you trim the foot, the bowl will be too fragile to make any other changes to the inside at that point. Carefully center the bowl to the wheel head using the rings on the wheel head as a guide. With scraps of fresh but stiff clay, create lugs to secure the bowl to the wheel head. Press the clay to the wheel head instead of up against the bowl itself to avoid marring the bowl. To smooth the inside of the bowl, wipe the walls with a damp sponge to soften the clay. Then starting in the middle with a red rib, Burnish the surface slowly all the way to the top. Trimming a bowl is a blind move, and it can be intimidating. First thing we need to know is how much clay do I have to work with on the bottom? One easy method is to poke your needle tool through the bottom and measure how much clay you have. The goal is to leave a quarter inch on the bottom, so in this case, it looks like we'll need to trim away about a half an inch of clay. Also make note of the diameter of the rim of the bowl. This will come in handy later. Turn the bowl over and center it. I'd like to put my finger on the wheel head, and as the bowl is spinning, where it hits my finger, adjust the bowl inward at that point until the bowl is centered. Again, use the lugs to secure it. As you can see, the bottom of the bowl is hanging over the belly of the bowl. I don't want that. What I do want is a profile that'll look like the pictures here. We want a rounded bottom with a foot ring. First I need to choose the trim tool to use. Since I plan to remove a lot of material and the bowl is a good size, I'll choose this particular trim tool to begin cutting away the excess clay that's overhanging the belly of the bowl. This cut is the first step to creating the outside edge of the foot. Be careful not to cut too much clay away. We can whittle this down as we go if it's needed. Here I'm being very cautious. I'm trying to leave a foot ring which will be about a quarter inch deep even if it doesn't seem to follow the natural contour of the clay. As a result, this leaves a very severe edge from the bowl to the foot. I'm going to change the angle of the tool and trim that away. Don't be afraid to continue the cut down the wall of the bowl. This particular bowl has a lot of excess clay to trim. Reassess the area between the foot and the belly of the bowl. The foot is deeper than my goal of a quarter inch, so I'm going to trim a little more of the ring to find that sweet spot where the natural curve of the bowl will meet up with the foot ring and the height of the ring will be a quarter inch. Repeat the process of cutting the little ledge of clay away so the connection between the ring and the body of the bowl are smooth. This is where knowing the diameter of the bowl rim comes in handy. A good rule of thumb is that the diameter of the foot ring will be between one-third and one-half of the rim's diameter. In this case, we'll shoot for a three-inch foot ring. This is the look I want. I'll get rid of this excess clay here 
and then we'll go ahead and trim the inside of the foot ring. I want the foot ring to be about a quarter inch wide. Using the needle tool, I'll mark that out. Again, we'll be removing a lot of material from the first trim, so we'll stick with the same trim tool here. I like to begin trimming from the center of the foot out to the mark that I made. By trimming the center away, you eliminate the weight that's pressing down on the very fragile center of the bowl, thus decreasing the chances that the floor will get too thin and collapse. Remember, I'm gonna remove about a half inch clay thickness from the center. As you cut downward towards the center of the clay, you may periodically press on the clay. You don't want the floor to have any give when you press down on it. If it does, you're dangerously close to cutting through the floor. Later in the video, I'll show you three ways to check the thickness of the bowl floor. Continue cutting methodically until you reach the mark that I made. Alternate cutting the bulk away with trimming the excess clay rings until you get a nice smooth surface. As you get to the foot ring, remember the floor will be curved, so you will cut farther down at the foot ring than you did at the center. The goal here is to trim downward along the foot ring so that visually there's an appearance that the center floor seamlessly connects with the curve of the outer bowl wall. Once you get the bulk of the clay trimmed away, you still need to refine the surface. I switched to a smaller tool designed to make thinner cuts. This tool has a more severe angle on the end, so I can cut right up next to the foot ring without fear of cutting too much away. Notice I'm still focused on the curve line from the center to the outside of the bowl. At this point, I'm left with a foot ring that's very squared off, which I don't want. It's time to round that off. I first use a damp sponge to soften the clay. You can use a strip of chamois cloth if you like to round the edges, but I like to use my fingers. I just work my fingers back and forth gently along the edge so that there are no sharp edges. Don't forget to clean up the bowl wall. Again, I take a wet sponge along the wall to soften it a bit. And then with a red rubber rib, I burnish the surface to eliminate the trimming rings. I thought I would also show you a fun way to accent your foot with a profiling trim tool. Note the bends in the metal. Beginning at the outer edge of the foot and the upper edge of the trim tool, Gently make the cut into the clay. Soften the sharp clay edges with your fingers. And voila! Now you have a fancy curve on the bottom. To give you a different view of the profile of the bowl, I thought it would be helpful to slice the bowl open. Here you can get a rough idea of what the profile should look like. Now I could have trimmed off a little more from the bottom, but I don't think this extra clay will cause me any problems in the end. Here you can see where the curve on the exterior of the bowl matches the curve on the interior of the bowl. Now I'll demonstrate how to trim a tumbler. This will require a different technique as you have to solve the problems of keeping a tall pot steady as you trim and you have a smaller surface to trim. Instead of using the lugs to secure the taller tumbler to the wheel head, I'll throw a chuck to hold it in place. Center a handful of stiffer clay down on the bat so it's roughly the diameter of the rim of the tumbler. To gauge this, I put the tumbler on top of the clay and make adjustments to the clay so that the tumbler fits snugly on top. You may still need to adjust the tumbler so that it's centered. Once centered, press it firmly to the bat. This time we'll use the smaller trim tool to remove the bulk of the clay. Using the same premise that we used on the bowl, make your cuts. Thank you. 
Again, I'm marking out my foot ring about a quarter of an inch in. Now I'm going to trim inside the foot ring. Where a bowl has a curved floor, the tumbler will have a flat floor to match the squared off floor inside the tumbler. I'm switching to a trim tool with a longer metal bar to get a smoother surface. Don't forget to trim the outside of the tumbler and then burnish the clay the same way you did as the bowl. Round the foot with your fingers, just like we did on the bowl. When you're happy with the tumbler, you can remove it from the chuck and clean up the rim with a damp sponge. Here are the three ways I mentioned earlier to make sure that you have trimmed the right amount of clay away. The first is to feel the bottom and make sure the bottom feels solid with no give. The second way is to tap the bottom for sound. If the clay is too thin, the clay will have a hollow sound. It should sound similar to the tone of the wall of the piece. Finally, check the weight. The piece should feel well balanced all around. This comes with practice, but if the bottom feels heavy, you may need to trim away a little more clay. Well, it looks like my work is done here. Back to Earth, just got a message from a customer who wants me to paint her pet chicken on a mug. If you like our videos, please like and subscribe. Our goal is to unite the universe through pottery. Would your right hand